Okay, so what you want to do initially, and this is for the guys that you know haven't done it before, you want to hold, you know, what Jeff was saying earlier, the best is 90 degrees, but the problem even with a Pyrex cup is it's hard to get the welding rod in there. So I like to see about an 80, 80 to 75 degree angle. So what it does is gives you the advantage to sneak the welding rod under, and you want to put it in into the leading edge of the puddle, okay? So you don't want to come over the top with the welding rod because there's a good possibility you're going to maybe touch the tungsten and then that's going to slow you down. So initially we're going to start by not even using welding rod and we're going to strike an arc. Now you can all put your helmets down. Diane. I'm not looking. I don't want you Go to. Go wide. Go way back. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and the nice thing about TIG welding is you have 100% control of the power source. I'm going to strike an arc. And right now, you can see I haven't even melted the base metal. I can move this around to possibly where I want to go. Maybe I was out of place. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to hold it about an eighth inch off, and I'm going to slowly increase the amperage. You can see the molten puddle there. And then, and this is for you guys who are just starting out, once you get that, you just want to work that puddle along and just keep constant motion. Obviously, the same height above the workpiece. That could use a little more heat there, but that's basically what you want to do. So once you get comfortable with moving the torch along, then the next thing you're going to do, and it's the same exact thing, put your helmets on, down, we're going to strike an arc, we're going to slowly increase the amperage, and then you can see the molten puddle, and from there you're just going to add the welding rod to the leading edge. It's actually very simple. You try to just keep a steady flow across the workpiece of the base metal. And then slowly, do not move your torch like if you were extinguishing an arc. Just keep it over the workpiece. Slowly let your foot off. And there you go. You know, and at that point, if you're comfortable with that, then the you've got, you can start <laughs> doing a butt weld. And we can go a lap weld or whatever you want to do. You want to uh, show the uh, post flow? Post flow? Sure. Um, right now, post flow says six. Well, you can see this, the tungsten is nice and silver. Post flow set at six seconds. Okay. That's a smaller one. Yeah, you? that's a 116. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to dial the post flow down. I'm going to set it to a second and a half. He's going to weld just like he did. And you'll see the effect that it'll have on the tungsten. And you'll see the effect on the uh, base metal. Okay. Well, you see that smoke coming up? I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. If you saw, if you see smoke, you got a problem. There's something wrong. Well, look at what happened to the tungsten. You got to kind of get close. You see how dark it is. You see it got black. Well, obviously, if you have that problem, you know there's something wrong. So, you have your post.